So let's have a look at how the home lab rack is powered. There are two power cables going to the rack from two different sockets and these sockets are two different circuit breakages in the house. So they both have these surge protectors. And from here the two power cables goes into the ATS and with the ATS or automatic transfer switch I can control which of the input the rack is using so at the moment it's using A I can set B as preferred and it switches to B here the UPS kicks in for a short while so now the preferred is B if I lose B A automatically takes over and since B is preferred when B comes back it again changes to B so I just got a power alarm now since I turned off uh, a power source will turn off in a little while so any load in the home lab which is not UPS uh, protected is connected to the ATS so from the ATS it goes to the UPS bypass switch which is this thing so here we have power coming from the ATS it goes to the UPS and then back from the UPS into this um, bypass switch and then into the PDU from here. So the, what the bypass switch does is exactly as the name implies. It allows me to bypass the UPS so that I can change the batteries, do maintenance, testing, things like that without taking the equipment offline. So if I flip this switch, I'm now running I'm without the UPS. So that switch or that changeover is completely invisible to the equipment so it just keeps running so as you can see we're in bypass now not going through the UPS and then back into normal so from the maintenance bypass switch this cable goes to the PDU power distribution unit you can see that and this is where power gets distributed to all of the different loads which are uh, UPS protected so the UPS is down here and then on the PDU so on the PDU we can see the current voltage level and uh, the current voltage level and the current being drawn we can also see the current kilowatts being used and the total kilowatt hours. Well, we seem to have maxed out. So all the eight outputs are on at the moment and we can cycle through them and see the current usage per output. Each output can also be individually turned on or off, either through the interface or on the panel. So if we go to number three, which I think I can safely turn off. Okay, so number three is off. So if we have a look at if this. Uh, 
uh, Home Assistant. We can see all of the outputs here. So here is the status. Here we can see number three, which says router firewall, but it's really not. It's off at the moment. And we can see the current being used on all of the different outputs. We can also read um, UPS stats, battery charge. Ah, come on, focus. Runtime, voltage, temperature, ATS, the uh, voltage on the two sources, uh, the current uh, being used, the active source, and the preferred source. So here we have the total power of the home lab being used right now, and with the current power price that is estimated at a hourly cost at about 0 0.35 NOx, which is like, a, well, divide by 10, 9 or 10, you get dollars. All right, so number three, we can turn number three back on. And then this computer started, I think. Flashed a bit at least. 